everybody, my name is John. This is the Firebird Restoration Station where we build cars in just a two-car garage. So uh, what we see here behind me is the Great Pumpkin Project, which was a 1968 Firebird. We got the transmission engine assembly put back onto the clean, painted, and all detailed up subframe. We work on doing the springs today. Um, that was one of the reasons why I put the engine and transmission on the subframe first. It's going to be weight or ballast. So I can use the jack to actually compress that spring to get it put back into the car. Um, now, you try to do without the weight of the transmission engine, you have to have some kind of spring compressor. And I'll tell you, springs are the things that I don't like messing with. They're just a lot of energy and one of the things that cause a little bit of stress when building these cars. So, I guess use caution, use wisdom, be aware of what you're doing when doing springs. I know I'm going to say that a lot, but man, there's just a lot of things that can go wrong. Now I've used the spring compressors. I have made one up that works really nice. I may have to use it for this one. We're about to find out because I have had to use it on one car and not the next. It has something to do with the spring rate, I'm going to guess, because you get cars with and without AC, with and without automatic. You start changing options around, it changes the rate, height, and I guess you say the tension of that spring. So... I'm hopeful that we'll be able to get these ones right in without having the spring compressor, but that's what we're going to find out today. Let me jump in and show you what we got. All right, so what I'm hoping to do is put that spring in, install the spindle, hold the ball joints in place, hopefully just the floor jack if I'm lucky enough to get these things to go. Now, the springs have an indexing point where the end of the coil rides. Uh, this one happens to be right here on the passenger side. I think the driver's side is a little clocked a little differently. Then there's also the same thing here in the top. So as long as your springs are configured right, that'll actually line up with your little detents in the control arm and the frame. So I'm going to get the spring put up into place and hopefully use the floor jack here behind me to get that spring to compress and get it locked in. If not, I've got a spring compressor tool that I'm going to try to use. Here it goes. Absolutely. I get this something to put on my jack here. Ideally, I don't like to scratch the paint up, but you know, that's what touch of paint's for, I guess. Hopefully my engine and transmission weigh enough. No, I'll drink too tight. But this will work. Uh, so far, oh, starting to lift it up off the jack stand. So let's see how close I'm not. This is one of the times I don't need to use the spring compressor, so I'll call that a major win. Cool. Now, let's not get the hardware. Oh, 
spring is installed. Well, that one's getting a whole lot more gooder than I anticipated. And like I said, another car is just what I've used in the past. It's a chunk of all thread. It's about five eighths of diameter. It's the base of the biggest piece that I could find that would barely fit in the hole where the shock would mount. So basically, I figured the bigger the better because I'm going to put a lot of tension on a thing. This is a chunk of track pad. This is pad. This is not a normal chunk of steel or mild steel. It will not bend under the force of that spring. Uh, so that might be kind of hard to get a hold of, but this is off like an old 320 excavator. And this is the bolt hole that actually secured it. Because you're trying to drill this stuff, forget it. It's too hard. And basically a washer and a nut. And you basically go through the entire spring and just compress the spring into place. And then you flip the control arm up. Now, if you don't have the engine and transmission and the weight on the frame, this is almost a must to get those springs installed because you just don't have enough pressure to compress the spring. But even sometimes I've had it work with that engine and transmission without the body on it. It just starts picking the whole car up. So this time around, we got lucky. So hopefully the right height is correct with these springs. But again, it's always a bit of a gamble and a bit of a guess. You try to look them up and like I said, all the options, it's kind of hit or miss. But I'm hoping that's all good. But I'll keep working on getting the rest of this dialed in, put together. Uh, transmission is done, dipstick working way forward. Got the exhaust manifolds cleaned up and put back on the car. So really looking like I'm going to hopefully get this thing running. So stay tuned or I guess follow along here. But I think we're going to work on next getting the disc brake conversion kit out and getting that thing all put hey, together so there you have it springs are installed not a major undertaking on this car so i'll take the easy victory when i can get one so not not a bad situation so i've got everything here laid on the floor the brake rotor the caliper caliper bracket the hoses all the bits there to get where i can put a wheel back on the front of this car because i need to get both months of roll back under the body back here so if you guys want to see that and you haven't subscribed yet yeah shame on you you better hit that button because i really would appreciate that so this team an old firebird restoration station here we appreciate you following us on this whole project putting the old great pumpkin back on the road so i'm gonna work on getting that video get the camera i'll put up, I'll put up on a separate video here so it'll probably pop up next if you guys want to check out how to do that but if not We'll get back to putting this engine all together and test firing right here as it sits on the garage floor. That way we can check it for leaks and any reason why I shouldn't button it up to the body of the car. Because it's a whole lot easier to fix it here as opposed to all tucked back up inside the car. Part of the reason why I like to test run them just like this. So, nonetheless, had a lot of fun this time around. Hope you guys got something out of the video. Of course, anything you like to see, let me know just the same. So, until then, we'll catch you guys next time.